as I did, you may have chosen to give your baby a pacifier. It is what we call a reflexive behavior for newborns to start sucking on the pacifier. It is pretty instinctive and it's totally normal. It soothes them, calms fussy babies. It's to help and enable nourishment. Prenatal imaging showed that babies suck on their thumb and on their fingers, even in the womb. And trust me, it is life saver. When your baby just won't settle and they are very fussy, it helps them comfort themselves and make them not want to suck on the boob all the time. Many of us choose to use the pacifier to replace the bottle or the mom's breast. This way, the baby will be able to comfort themselves and settle down without having to ingest any food. We call that a non-nutritive sucking. The benefits of pacifiers are actually quite numerous and it can be life-changing when they finally accept it. Gina didn't want it for the first months of her life and she was having a lot of reflux, she was having, she was having colleagues, you know, the, the witching hour was crazy, we were rock her forever and she was sucking on my, on my arm, giving me like suction marks because she wanted, she wanted that comfort, she wanted to suck on it. Um, finally, after a month, she accepted the pacifier and it was revolutionary. <laughs> we were more peaceful because she was crying less. Uh, I was able to pursue my breastfeeding journey because she wouldn't always want the, the, the breast and my nipples were so sore at the beginning. It was extremely painful. Uh, so yes, thanks to that, I was able to keep on breastfeeding uh, and I'm still breastfeeding now. So to me, I think the use of a pacifier was extremely beneficial during the first months. But I know there are lots of benefits to it, but I think you need to know what impact it can have on language development and language use for your baby after a few months of use. And especially if you give the pacifier all the time. So yes, the pacifier has lots of benefits and it can help settle your baby very fast and prevent any meltdowns. But I think it's important for you to know all the counterpart that comes with it. And especially if you're in that phase when your baby is starting to grow some teeth, you might be a bit worried about the impact it will have on them. A study done on 50,000 children concluded that a second habit resulted in 60% of dental malocclusions. It's scary. <laughs> But what's scarier is what come with dental malocclusions. I am not going to go into much details about the impact it can have on denture, as I'm not a dentist at all, but I will link a few of the studies in the description box below. So if you want, you can check that out. But what I want to talk about today is actually the impact it will have on speech development and pronunciation. The fact that it impacts the mouth of your child means that it will also impact its use, its function, how your child will be able to use it. And that's essential in speak production. So can you see that coming? Yes, if you give the pacifier too often and for too long, your child can end up with a speech articulation problem. But most of all, if your toddlers have a pacifier in their mouth all the time, it will prevent them from actually trying to speak. Obviously, when you have something in your mouth all the time, it prevents you from pronouncing things very well. And that's what's going to happen with your baby. If they have the pacifier in the mouth and they try to babble and they try to imitate your sound, it will prevent them from doing it well. It will take them longer to achieve it. And as we say in France, it's not polite to talk with your mouth full. So think twice when you give your child the pacifier as a habit. I am guilty of that. I say it, it is hard. I think it's pretty obvious that the prolonged use of pacifier can have a lot of bad effects on, on the speech development, on the dental health, and on basically the speed at, at which your child will be able to speak, right? But it is hard. It is extremely hard to get rid of this habit that we as parents have to give the pacifier as a coping mechanism, pretty much. Um, we are afraid that our children are going to cry. And so we want to prevent that by giving the pacifier too early. So. I'm guilty. I'm completely guilty of that. When Gina was younger, I would always, always have to have the pacifier next to me. It was kind of the reassurance for me more than it was for her. So basically, if I went, if I left the house without any pacifier, I would go into uh, a drugstore to buy a pacifier 
because I was afraid that if she was starting to cry, I wasn't going to be able to comfort her. But really, I want to emphasize that after six months, it is time for you to try to win your baby out of the use of the pacifier. There can be some other coping mechanism to do that. You can try cuddling your baby. You can try singing a song to them. You can try massaging them a little bit. Just offer them your presence. It's going to take a lot of hard work and it's going to take determination on your part. Because of course, if they've been used to use the pacifier as a, a comforting tool, um, it's going to take quite some time to get rid of this habit. And you have to replace that with another healthy habit. So for example, giving them uh, their teddy bear or something that can replace this comforting that they're searching for with the suction. We want them to practice the sounds and make early word attempts. That being said, I haven't done it myself yet, but we've been having some rules that we are not breaching from. So for example, the use of the pacifier is restricted only for naps and uh, night time. We can also give it when we are in the car because she's extremely fussy when she gets into uh, the car seat. But that's the only moment where we are actually giving her the pacifier now. The hardest thing for you is going to break from this dependence feeling. Yes, it is addictive. The suction is addictive. It's so comforting. It releases oxytocin. Just know that if you keep on giving the pacifier to your child, this habit will get harder and harder to break from. Personally, my parents waited until I was around three years old to make me stop using the pacifier, like most of us do. And when this happened, I was so addicted to the sucking, uh, to the comfort, to the oxytocin release that it gives you, that I started sucking on my thumb. And basically the problem became even worse because it is harder to stop sucking on your thumb because you have it right next to you whereas your, the pacifier can be taken away by the parent. The American Academy of Pediatrics uh, recommends that you wean your child from the pacifier during the second six months of his life, so from six months to 12 months. And that's something we're trying to do as a family. And if you want to do the same, come and embark on this journey with us. Uh, we've been trying to implement those rules that I talked to you about. And right now it is to restrict the use of the pacifier, to break from the habit, to give it to her as soon as she starts crying and to install other coping mechanisms such as hugging her teddy bear, hugging us, singing a song together, or even reading a book together. She really enjoys reading, reading books with us. So what's your view on pacifiers? Are you absolutely for or against it? At the end of the day, I think if the use of the pacifier is really comfortable to you and you feel good with all the impact it will have on your baby in the future, well, just keep using it. But I would really consider trying to put some rules and to break from this habit that you have, you parents, which is to give the pacifier way too often. Baby's up. <laughs> Well, I think this is the end of the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.